So if we look at today as having the very first and the best ever day that's possible and giving that gift to ourselves, to know that there is that infinite flow which is already flowing and we're in the stream of what's, what's happening now. We're in the stream of what's happening now. And I was at the Woof and Bowls event yesterday in Corrales and it was at Wagner Farms and there was this big horse and so I was taking my dog for a walk and meeting, meeting and greeting some folks and this, this gentleman farmer was talking about how he was training this horse. It was kind of hard to train and sort of like our mind and our mind sometimes is hard to train as, I, as I'm talking to myself here sometimes. And so this gentleman farmer says, you know, I was teaching him to say hallelujah when, because he was a spiritual man when he wanted the horse to stop. So he would be riding on this big horse and he'd say, hallelujah, and it would go, woo, and it would stop. And then he also taught it to say blessings when he wanted it to go. And so blessings and to move forward. And so this horse, he was, he was riding it one day and he, up on the top of Sandia Mountain. And it got spooked. And he was, it was going full blast and he was galloping. And so remember again, he was saying, you know, blessings for giddy up. And he was saying, hallelujah, to say stop. And what happened was he'd forgotten when he was at the very top of the mountain, he'd forgotten what he meant to say. And so he started, he says, well, amazing grace. And it didn't do a thing. It just kept running and running over the, almost over the cliff. And he said, well, I don't know what I trained it to do. And so it is. No, and it wouldn't stop. It just kept galloping and galloping. So be it. No, and it kept going forward and forward and almost to the edge, just past the aspens, almost to the edge. And he finally thought, oh, hallelujah. And he came to a screeching halt just before the cliff. And he said, oh, blessings. <laughs> oh. So as we count our blessings today, uh, Dr. Ernest Holmes has a quote, and he's the founder of our philosophy, The Science of Mind, which is a guide for spiritual living. And he talks about that divine guidance as we train our, train our way of living as far as when our mind runs wild like a wild horse sometimes. And we have to, to notice, too, am I the one who has hold of the reins, or does something else have my reins? And to remember what wordology we have. I, I, we've invented a new word, by the way. We were working on a project, a lot of the team leaders, um, late that week and you know, last week. It seemed like a long week that day. <laughs> And I felt so loved and supported in our adventure, and there's so many hearts and hands. And so we had to invent this new word. It was wordology. And so Dr. Ernest Holmes talks about divine guidance, and that it just is, much like Tilly was saying, is that as we surrender into the guidance and the inspiration that already is, divine guidance is, and that love intelligence is now governing the activity of my life into the fulfillment of joy those blessings as we move forward into the fulfillment of love, of unity, of happiness, and success now and at all times. And I look at what I give my attention to, and some of the best things that we can do is give attention to ourselves, give attention to our higher self, give attention to those selves, those people in our life that we love. So we can give our time and attention. We can give our love. We can give our prayerful ways. We can give our reaching out to one another and reaching out to people who are close to us. I know that they would rather have us in their lives and be fully present than just sending flowers or just sending a text or just sending an email. But to know that we can share time and we can give the gift of ourself. We can know what is vital and valuable in our lives and that we all bring that value and that we can tell people what they mean to us. We can give our time, we can give our attention, we can give our love, we can give our support. We could look at people in the eyes and give our attention. We can be heart to heart with people. And I was in training for the, uh, the ice cream social that's that's this afternoon at 12.30. We have a leadership gathering and everyone's a leader, so y'all come and just be that leader that we are in our own lives. So I was in training, and if you note on the Facebook page, there's this big, I think it's bigger than this, this platform, is this banana split. 
And so I was in practice, I was in training already for that ice cream social. We just had to give our attention in sharing, you know, sharing across the table of that, of that banana split. And so to be able to know that we can say the sweetness of that, the sweetness of our lives, that I care, I love you, and I want to share and care in your life because you are valuable. I know that I bring value and that I have, I have value. And there, there's a story of a friend of mine who, he, it was his son who told the story. And his father, his father was a modest, modest man and he would dress up as a clown. And he would bring joy to kids and he would go to various, various places and he would, he would bring his joy because it was fulfilling for him to share who he was. And he knew that of his time and of his energy, he was, he was absolutely... In, in his joy and that it couldn't help be, but be contagious. And so he would show up at all these various places, whether it was nursing homes or whether it was homes for people who needed more skills or whatever that was, whatever challenges people were having, he found himself to be fulfilled and valuable and share that value. And what he, do, what he did from these, from these gigs is he set aside a jar. And it's much like in my family, we have a jar in the, in the hallway and we would just put our spare change out of our pocket and, and we would put that. And then at the end of the year, we would have a wonderful holiday meal out of that for our friends, for our neighbors, for our family. And it would just can only enhance, put the cherry on top of that banana split. And he was, he was so modest that when he would sit his son down at the table, he was teaching him, in essence, how, how much of... If, if, valuable time he would give and, and our book of the month talks about the two most valuable things that we can give are our time and our resources and so what the father did was he would set aside his resources and he would give not only his energy but he would give of his time to these other people and bring joy in their lives and he would also um, he would just he would just make the best table he would set the best table that he could to share and have a heart to heart and to have face-to-face -face communication. And at one point, the son was really busy and he'd moved to another state. And he was too busy to come visit for the holidays. And he said, you know, I've just, Dad, I've started a new business and I'm not able to come. I want to come, but I cannot come at this time. And it wasn't soon after that his dad had passed and he realized that, whew, he missed out. He could have shared more quality time. And what they had discovered was by the end of all they had, they had settled out, um, you know, they'd given him celebrations at all these organizations where he was of service. And they celebrated his life. And his son came to celebrate his life at those other organizations. And there was one in particular. And at that one organization, they said, you know, your dad raised five figures for us. He had set aside that much and come to find out that that son had also, he had set aside that same amount in those jars for him as well. And so now he carries on that legacy and is, is sharing his love in these other organizations where he lives. But his father set that example to give his time and his attention and to bring his value, his value to life. And what happened was so many people came alive out of whatever challenges that they were experiencing. They came alive in their life. And, and to know that there's that meal that we can share with friends and family, that we can set aside that time and that all of our resources and set aside whatever that is that we, that we move forward in those, in those blessings that we are. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we giving our time? Are we giving our attention? Are we giving our love and our prayers? And we can pick up the phone. You know, we can send an email. We can send a text. But we can personally visit with someone. We can make sure that we're not cheating ourselves out of that opportunity. <clears throat> we can give our undivided attention heart to heart. We know that we're already, we've already started that heart to heart. And that there was at another center I was at that a gentleman would bring his lunch and he would um, just come and enjoy being around people and he would just share <clears throat> and he would just show up and just be be fully present and that's all that we ask for him to do is just be up and give his be be there show up be up he, he was up <laughs> and he could share his his time his time with us and and it wasn't too soon 
after that he had thought he had thought that he needed more support and evidently he had had a stroke and he could not get out anymore he could not drive and and at that time we were in the midst of solving some problems and I, I we were doing our best to be buoyant and resilient and moving forward together and and co-creating and creating wonderful things together and many hearts and hands and many oars in the water and that sort of thing and I said Do you know just give him my love just give him my love and it wasn't until I was able to get through that and move through whatever was going on that I could show up I could show up and visit him and I was there for about an hour and he just wept he just wept and he sobbed and it was just like this most glorious moment for him to just fill his heart and to share his heart and I realized that the difference that we all make in each other's lives and it could be years later that we talk about it or that we share about it and to know that we bring that forward into our experiences as far as that connection that communication and I know that there's no regrets no regrets for that gentleman who just showing up at his door to see his face light up to see that we can truly make a difference and that one hour did wonders that one hour of that love and support and attention and that undivided attention to be singly focused and to share and to care for one another to care from that place of I have value and I and you have value and that <clears throat> it's not that it's not we're gonna not not set aside time for one day or some day you know some days not a day of the week so we're not just going to set aside one day or when the gas prices go down and it's good I'm glad they're down or when <clears throat> the kids go back to school or when the um, the Broncos play the 49ers I I <laughs> talk about divided attention you know I'm in this end zone I haven't been from the Bay Area and I'm in this end zone too for the Broncos and the and the 49ers but to know that there is that that undivided attention in giving that encouragement and to say I choose I choose to be joyful today I choose to have the energy and to give up my time and my love and oftentimes it takes a choice and we get to take a chance and we get to make a change so sometimes we must make a choice we make a choice to show up in person rather than just that phone call we get to take a chance and to be heart to heart and we get to make a change and to see people come alive and only you can give your time and attention and love no one else can do that for us and a phone call is good but a face to face and a heart to heart is even better So I get to look at how am I contributing? How am I making a contribution? How am I in the flow? And oftentimes it includes living a simpler life. It's like I go to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And if I have the goal of going to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, sure I can describe it for people but there's nothing better than being at the very bottom of that Grand Canyon and looking up looking up and seeing that pure pure sky and the vastness and the expansiveness now we can describe that to each other and we want to go there we want to go there ourselves and surrender into whatever that journey is and go there go there to the very depths of the bottom of that Grand Canyon and it's the very same thing with our spiritual practice in showing up for ourselves sometimes we get to make that journey going going deep into that and then if we ride a mule up or whatever that is to be able to describe and it's the same thing as the Buddha says it's as I'm pointing to whatever that spiritual practice is that's so rich rich and enlivening for me don't look at my hand that's pointing to that journey but look at what that represents look to the journey look to that and have that that be led by our blessings as if we have the reins of that horse so to know that we can get up off the couch and not just talk about whatever that journey is but to get up and get off of that couch because that's what that journey is 
So we can do the sharing of the, whatever it is we want to start gracefully. Start gracefully at the bottom of that Grand Canyon. And to know that we're supported and guided on the way up. And that there's that answers that, that come. And that our consciousness grows with consistency. That's what spiritual practice is. Our consciousness, our awareness grows with that consistency and showing up in our own lives and our, and our, our way of giving, our way of being. So we can see how our contributions shape our lives. We can see how perhaps living a simpler life. And if I live a simpler life, oftentimes that means that I am circulating more time, more resources, whatever that energy is, and that it's not complicated. I asked some friends of mine, what was their secret to, living, um, to being married for 40 years? And they said, it's as simple as we, we did not get divorced. It's not complicated sometimes as we realize that we can show up and have that commitment to our being in spiritual practice and, and living that simpler life. And there's another friend of mine who was doing her best to um, make ends, in essence, this, meet, this end meet this end. And I know that sometimes it's, it's hard if we're living paycheck to paycheck in some instances. She was a single mom, um, and, and it, was, it, was hard. it was hard for her to juggle, you know, so many plates in the air and that, that sort of thing. And as she was talking about her realization to lead a simpler life, that she didn't have to consume so much that she began to downscale what was necessary. And she, she took a look at what was essential. What is essential here? I'm going to give time and attention to my kids. That's what I'm up to. I'm going to give time and attention to my, my parents and to my grandparents and to, to just eliminate what is not workable. And she began to have that realization that she could simplify her life. And I know that we all have areas that we can simplify in our life, whether that's with regard to family, whether that's with regard to our resources, whether that's with regard to our, to our health, to may have that renewed commitment and have it be simple, much like not getting divorced, but that it was that, that commitment to that spiritual practice of being in that relationship. So there's that consciousness of consistency that's, that's there. And I know we've all heard the saying, to live every day like it's our last right? And that we can live every day like it's your loved one's last as well. So to know that it's, it's so valuable and it's so precious and to know that what we bring is precious and to honor, to honor that preciousness. My family, uh, my, both my folks were teachers and so we had the summers off and we would go to Hawaii. Yeah, have a couple months off, might as well go to Hawaii. And so I grew up, I grew up having this experience of meeting new people and most of the time I was hanging around adults and sharing, sharing whatever that adult conversation was. And uh, I'll give you another example. I, um, before we'd go to Hawaii too, we'd always every year go visit some friends in uh, Paris. It wasn't Paris, France. It was Paris, California. <laughs> so as we traveled to Paris, California, it took, it took hours. And it was so boring. I, w I, would, <laughs> I would listen to some of the stories and I could finish the sentence because year after year, we, I, would, I could tell you the stories. And my parents were so generous and kind to give attention to these people that we loved. That's what it was about. It was about just showing up and loving one another. And we would travel hours, and it was, it was just so enriching. And I can remember some of these stories that light up my life. And to know that they had that commitment every year to travel to Paris. So there were so many blessings in that. I realized, I realized that showing up and, and giving of the heart and having that heart-to-heart -heart connection and making that, those hour journeys, what we would do is we would laugh. We would have a good time together. We would share those stories. We would treat them as if it was their last day. We would treat them and to know that if we had one hour to live, 
then who would we call? If we only had one hour to live, we would call these people in Paris. Who would you call if you had one hour to live? And what would you say? If we live every day like it's our last, I see some people chuckling here, and you know, sometimes we get to take ourselves a little bit more lightly too. So I, I, think that's, I think that's good because when we were with sitting down with these people after we traveled hours, we would. We would laugh, we would cry, we would be together. And we would live that day like it was our last, like it was our last and like it was their last day. So who would we call and what would we say? And what are we waiting for? I anticipate that this is the very best day ever and that as we move forward in this day, we think of those people that we love and we give our time and our undivided attention to them. And so when my dad and I and my mom came home from, uh, from Hawaii, and those were great times, because all of our relatives would come over and we'd swap, swap houses. This one family where we would exchange houses, they'd come stay at our place and we'd go stay at their place. And my dad loved to sail. And I remember him coming home from the beach one day. And he says, you know, I'm not really feeling very well. And he says, I just want you to know how much I love you how much I care for you, how proud I am of you. And it wasn't long after that, he says, you know, I'm really not feeling that good. And so I ran and I got my mom who was still at the beach. And I said, mom, you know, come home, see what dad's, you know, see what da dad's up to. And so it wasn't, it wasn't long after that that uh, he went to the hospital and um, we had, we got more time to, to say how much we loved each other. And then he was gone. And I have no regrets. I have no regrets because we really did. It was, it, we really did live each day like it was our last. And we just, you know, be, imagine being a product of two educators and, and learning so much and sharing so much together. You know, an evening gratitude practice and waking up at breakfast with the Science of Mind magazine with inspirations, and I'm so, so grateful for that. But I'm sharing, I'm sharing this because when we had such a good time, we had such a great time together, and I have no regrets, and I'm really at peace, and I'm really grateful. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for the value and the joy that I bring and for the love that I can show up with my undivided attention in those moments where we share and care for one another and be fully present in our life. And we can make life a lot simpler and realize that it's not, not complicated. And that the reason that I'm sharing this is to make sure that we're not putting things off, that we make that commitment, that we can know that our, our account of love, our support is full that we're full up and overflowing and living in that flow. And one day, it's not that we're going to do one day that we're going to see people. It's not that one day that I'm going to just forgive, or it's not one day that I'm going to carve out some time. I'm going to begin to eliminate what stands in the way of showing up and sharing and oh, I have goosebumps and, and caring for people. And to know that this is the choice. This is taking the chance. This is making the change the change in our hearts and the change in our actions and our extension of our love and to give that gift of ourself. So I know that we don't want to have any regrets and that we want to just be in the present moment of love and that we are living this day as the very best day ever and trusting and knowing that what we bring has so much value and so much love and fulfillment. And so being in the fulfillment of this very moment, I know and declare that there is that satisfying presence and power which is ever-present and is ready and, and being willing to call upon that and to surrender in that, giving of our time, our undivided attention, and our love. So I invite us to just experience this love in this very moment and to know and trust that all is well, that there is the infinite presence and the divine guidance and the flow of this positive energy and to know that living in this flow of our heart, 
Knowing that there is the one heart and that there is the one mind and, and that there is the beautiful spiritual essence, this divine nature which is so, so very natural, being in this place of that which is true and that which is being in the flow of this energy and being filled up and overflowing in the good. So I know that there is the harmonizing presence and good which is ever present and it is ever expanding in my life as I am connected, as I am in unity, as I am in the flow of love and extending in that which I intend and give and in this flow in this beautiful season of love. I move forward in gratitude knowing that there is the great fullness, the great fullness of this very moment and sharing in that and caring and giving it my time my attention, and knowing that there is the undivided whole. So being from this wholeness and well-being, I am so, so very grateful. And I know that as I release this word into the action of the law, the loving presence, and knowing that there is the loving oneness and the loving source that lifts us up, and knowing that there is peace, there is harmony, and there is absolute fulfillment. And so be it, and so it is. And please join in a few minutes of stillness as the practitioners rise.